This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Uh-oh, now even Ralph Nader is attacking Tesla's full self-driving system. The famous safety expert says that using owners to beta test FSD is, and I quote, one of the most dangerous and irresponsible actions by a car company in decades. Nader claims FSD malfunctions every eight minutes. Now, we're pretty sure most Tesla owners do not agree with him. So if you've got a Tesla with FSD, we'd love to hear about your experience. Speaking of Tesla, it's really making progress at its Berlin Gigafactory. It's moving to a two-shift schedule this month after recently halting production for two weeks to upgrade the plant with new casting machines and other equipment. The plant is currently producing about 1,000 vehicles a week, but Tesla's targeting 3,000 EVs a week by the end of October and 5,000 by the end of the year. Tesla plans to eventually run a three-shift schedule to reach that goal. Just when we thought that sky-high used car prices were as bad as they could get, it looks like they're getting even worse. According to IC Cars, the average used car, one to five years old, went up nearly 11% in July compared to last year, and now sits at over $34,000. And it's even worse for used electric vehicles. They've gone up by nearly 57%, and hybrids were up over 30%. So what's going on? Well, with inventory low and gas prices high, demand for fuel-efficient vehicles is going through the roof. And be sure to tune in to AutoLine After Hours later today when Sandy Monroe will be back on the show. He's got some controversial predictions that he's going to drop, and we've got some questions of our own. Like how did Sandy go from picking tomatoes to becoming a YouTube star? You heard that right, picking tomatoes. And if you want to know what that's all about, join John and Gary when the show goes live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. If you don't like the rigmarole of plugging in an electric vehicle, or maybe you've got a disability, Mala and Siemens have the solution for you. They're teaming up to develop wireless EV chargers and focus on promoting standards for inductive charging technology. All you have to do is pull your car over a charging pad and never have to hassle with any cables again. Pickup trucks are not a big segment in China, but maybe that's about to change. Back in July, Geely announced a new EV brand called Radar and revealed its first model, an electric truck called the RD6. Well, now here's its interior. It's highlighted by large digital displays, but note the blocky accents in the dash, doors, and center console, which we think is meant to give it a more trucky appearance. The RD6 will have both single and dual motor setups and an estimated range of up to 600 kilometers or 370 miles. While it's a little surprising Radar's first model will be a truck, since they're banned for most Chinese cities, It also has plans to make SUVs and ATVs. You know, China has some of the most interesting vehicle names, like Punk Cat or Ballet Cat. Well, now I get to introduce you to the Cool Dog, a new SUV from Haval that officially just hit the market with a starting price between $18,000 and $22,000. You may notice some influence from Haval's large SUV called the Big Dog, but we think it bears a strong resemblance to the Ford Bronco Sport, and the two vehicles are pretty darn close in size as well. The Detroit Auto Show, which returns next month, is becoming a lot more than just an auto show. It's adding a new air mobility experience to showcase VTOLs, or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, as well as amphibious sport planes, hoverbikes, hoverboards, and jet suits. 
there will be flight demonstrations taking place over the Detroit River, and inside the convention center, there will be displays from six air mobility companies. Quite a few automakers are developing VTOLs as well, and maybe they're going to become a new fixture at auto shows. After buying a Chevy Bolt and charging it at home, Pamela Talley realized she was missing out on her favorite gas station snacks. So Chevy stepped in to help turn her garage into an at-home convenience store that includes a frozen drink machine, hot dog warmer, and more. We'll probably see more stuff like this as people fit EVs into their lifestyles, but I'm just glad to see that Pamela Talley wasn't interested in getting any gas station sushi. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. With global reach across three continents, Tejan Automotive Technologies make vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Tejan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Volvo is partnering with an Israeli startup called UVI to automate vehicle inspections at its dealerships. As a car comes into the service area, it's automatically scanned to see if there are any fluid leaks, rust, damage, or missing components. And it checks the tires for tread depth and uneven wear, and it scans the body for dents, dings, scratches, paint defects, and broken glass. Then it generates an appraisal within minutes. Volvo is encouraging its dealers to buy this equipment and will even pay for part of it. Interestingly, UVI developed this technology at checkpoints in Israel to detect explosives in cars that might be used by terrorists. Whenever we report on new technology, it's almost always about some new digital development or some clever battery chemistry or a new kind of lightweight material. So whoever thought we'd be reporting about cardboard boxes? A company called P2 Packaging came up with a design for a cardboard box that caught our eye. A standard cardboard box used in the auto industry might have six slots or cells to carry components, but P2's box doubles that to 12 cells. It's constructed stronger so it doesn't need air gaps for crust space, and the boxes can be reused up to 10 times. Ford, General Motors, Tesla, Volkswagen, and BMW already use these boxes. And P2 says they cut millions of dollars in expenses, reduce inventory space, save thousands of trees, and reduce a company's carbon footprint by hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. Not too bad for a cardboard box. One of the design trends these days is to create a bit of theater when the driver gets in the car. So check out what Genesis did on the GV60. They call it the Crystal Sphere. When the driver pushes the start button, the sphere rotates 180 degrees to reveal the gear selector, and when a gear is selected, it provides haptic feedback to confirm it's engaged. The sphere has a jewel-like look and even features ambient lighting. And not only is it a cool design element, it also acts as a safety feature. The crystal sphere can't be rotated when the car is charging, and it glows red when it's in reverse. The GV60 is currently available in Europe with a starting price of $57,500. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.